on the day the NHS turns 75, we've asked Dr Hillary for a prescription. He's used to issuing prescriptions, mm. but this time it's a prescription of a different kind, yeah. a prescription to secure the entire future of the National Health Service for the next 75 years. Yes, yeah, so here it is. <laughs> Uh, newly qualified doctors should repay training costs unless they work in the NHS for 10 years. A mandatory 10-year service prescription. Dr Hillary also wants to see better pay and conditions for social care workers to attract new recruits. That's prescription two. And he's prescribing itemised bills for every hospital. So, uh, for every hospital stay, so patients get a sense of treatment costs. Mm. So, that's Hillary's three. In a new GMB poll, we also put some of Dr Hillary's ideas to the public. Charlotte has the results. Yes, let's take a look at the details of this. 62% of respondents think people should be charged if they don't turn up for a GP appointment. And around 7 in 10 think patients should be able to see their GP the same day they want to be seen. Well, the survey also found 65% of respondents think nurses should be paid more and more than half believe that newly qualified doctors should be required to work for the NHS for that 10 years. They also have a little support for means testing charge for ambulances with only one in five backing this idea. We're joined now by Dr Hillary and former Health Minister Edwina Curry. Just starting with you, Dr Hillary, before we turn to, um, to, to Edwina. Um, it's interesting, the ideas that you're putting forward are all important. They make a change, but they're not revolutionary. It's not about ripping the NHS up and starting no. again. Do you think the argument is, one, the NHS as a public free at the point of view service is here to stay? And the question is, how do we make it work better? Yeah, it's, it's a very cherished and beloved institution which revolutionised healthcare in this country uh, since 1948. And of course we need to preserve it. It does wonderful work every single day. And it should be free at the point of care. The question is, what should it be providing? When you think that a single medicine these days, in some instances, for a one-off treatment for one person can cost more than £2 million, we have to decide what it can afford to do. I think it should be uh, doing what it was intended to do in 1948, treat emergencies, treat children with meningitis who couldn't otherwise afford to pay for a doctor and get access to health care, treat people with cancer, heart disease. Mm. These important things, there are certain frivolous things that I think it should not be required to do now. Okay. And I think we need a new contract with citizen responsibility, uh, uh, looking after themselves as well as uh, expecting the NHS so one to do of, I was a little bit disappointed when we saw your prescription that it wasn't written in, in illegible, illegible handwriting, handwriting. I'm sorry. on a prescription I'm not a real pad. Doctor, it, was, I don't it had obviously <laughs> been translated by our expert graphics Absolutely. department. Absolutely. Um, but one of your uh, main ideas uh, is to charge patients for missing an appointment. Now, this had huge support amongst those surveyed. 62% said, yes, if you don't go to the doctor, you should be charged for that missed well, appointment. You wouldn't However, think of doing it, it is politically very unpopular. So, well, it, why do you think it's a good idea? It's a good idea, but it, it's, it, it, it epitomises the fact that, that people don't respect what they're getting for the NHS. They're taking it for granted. You wouldn't dream of not going to your solicitor's appointment because you know you get charged. You wouldn't dream of not going to your dentist's appointment because you get charged. But why do people think that... Uh, they won't even bother to tell the doctor they're not going. Right. So, one appointment for somebody else who's needy mm. could, have, could have had that Edwina appointment. Edwina Curry, as a former health minister... Yep. Um, what do you think about the idea of making people respect the time of their overworked GP by saying you're going to get a £5 fine, for instance, for not turning up? Well, <clears throat> Dr Hillary and I would agree that the NHS is wonderful and we should keep it and we like it the way it is and I personally would do anything to reduce the bureaucracy uh, and some of these suggestions would increase the bureaucracy, mm. which means that money would be going into paying for box tickers and... and bill producers and all the rest of it. So that bit of it I'm against. What we need to do is be very practical, though, about the health service. It is one of the biggest employers on the planet. Mm. So there aren't that many spare people in this country. You know, the, the, the only ones that are bigger are people like Indian Railways and, and the Red China Army, that sort <laughs> of thing. We are talking about a very huge uh, organisation in a country of only 66, mm. 67 million people. I would like to see us upskill the people who are there. We've done it once already, for example, when we took 
ambulance drivers and turn them into paramedics. I'd like to see us taking the healthcare assistants in hospitals and the, uh, the porters, the cleaners, uh, the catering staff, and upskilling them so they can do more and take more of that sort of work. Yeah. Um, I would like to see us thinking about when people come home, they're looked after by usually elderly relatives. Mm. Isn't that right, Doctor? On a carer's allowance. And what that means is they are unskilled. There's very little advice and help for those people. Um, when I was looking after my husband at home when he was uh, very ill with cancer, nobody taught me how to avoid a bed sore. Nobody taught me how to lift properly. Nobody taught me how to take blood pressure. So there's a whole army of people there already that are doing the care. If we can upskill them and support them better, we'll get much yeah. better care and everyone will feel a lot more confident about how they're handling it. But more bureaucracy? No, 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 no. Now, no, no, no. so uh, coming back to that point, do you think fining people for missed appointments simply adds to more form filling? Is that Of course your... it does. So actually, the cost would be the, the money raised would be cancelled out by the cost of, of filling it in it the form. And it means you'd have to recruit people to do that mm. kind of paperwork right. when what we're all trying to do is recruit mm. people to look after us in terms of the specialty care and the knowledge and so on. No, I'm, I'm against that. The interesting and, thing and on also... that particular point, though, about the charging, because because you made it about bureaucracy, mm -hmm. you both said that keeping the NHS fundamental service free at the point of use, the head of the British Medical Association, the doctor's... Um, union said that the BMA has always stood firmly against the idea of charging patients for missed appointments. And he said because the plan would ultimately threaten the fundamental principle that the NHS delivers free care at the point of need for all. So the BMA say they're against the thing which our viewers all support... But actually, he says because it would threaten the fundamental for charging principle of the NHS for charging for appointments. No, 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 missing no, appointments. No, no, for, for, for charging for missing appointments. Missed appointments. He was saying, yeah. Okay. Every other country. I mean, if you look at Spain, you look at France, you look at USA, they don't have a problem with bureaucracy. I go to my garage to get my 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 tyres changed. They give me an invoice. They know exactly what it costs, and I know what I've been charged. Yeah. We could easily do that. We should easily be able to do it with proper IT, and then people would understand how much value for money they're getting. Mm -hmm. If I said to you, how much would it cost you to go and be anaesthetised and have a hernia repair, you wouldn't have a clue. You wouldn't be able to tell me how much that costs. Nobody knows. Sure. Not but the, managers, but the trouble not politicians, doing... not even doctors know what the NHS is doctor, costing Doctor, us. doctor, doctor, here's yes. a patient talking, yes. all right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, One of the problems with all of that is the more bureaucracy and the more you attach a price to things, you're going to deter some people. And you're particularly going to deter some of the older people. I mean, I was born just before the health service was, was created. Uh, and people don't want to bother the doctor. We want to encourage them to do that. People don't want to be um, spending money that perhaps a younger person would need. All of that, no, I would say don't do that. Don't go in that direction. But think about how you can upgrade and upskill the people who are already working in the health service and the people who are already doing the caring, improve the discharge between hospital and home, get people to be more responsible. That's why the apple <laughs> is a prop. You know, all that sort of thing will help. Uh, and also support the research. The work that's done to improve all the care and that shows us how we can look mm -hmm. after ourselves better. I, I, I hear what you say about upskilling. I, I think the, uh, I've worked with, over the years of my TV career, over a dozen health ministers. And they, they all seem to be focused on short termism, you know, yeah. winning votes and then not fulfilling promises later on. Uh, and, you know, the reforms that they've made are often haven't worked. Now, we talk about upskilling. I think. A, a, a common theme amongst politicians is, is to undervalue the skills that nurses and mm. doctors already have. So by saying that, yes, anyone can do a bed sore, anybody can do social care, is not true. We have nurses that are doing wonderful work in intensive care, practice nurses doing asthma and diabetic clinics, helping GPs, uh, resuscitating patients in cardiac uh, units, and we undervalue them so much. And this argument that, oh, we can't pay them more because we would only then get people who want more money going into the health service is crass. We don't say that about teachers or actors or musicians who, who, who do their job um, for the love of the job they do. Mm. We don't say that they'll have too much money if we, if we pay them too much. We've got to look after our staff but, for sure, attention and recruitment. Ab abs abs absolutely. Although the BMA, which you mentioned uh, earlier, uh, is busy campaigning for a 35% pay rise for people being paid over £100,000 a year. I'm not sure that's exactly yeah, but where we want to be. complains about footballers earning twice that in a week. 
Uh, with respect, yes. there are fewer footballers than there are doctors in the health That's service. The, the average uh, salary of a the average, doctor the is average not is... over £100,000. And also well, inflation well, is even better than that. The BMA, the BMA has, one of been, has been one of the most difficult organisations mm. for any health minister to deal with. I'll give you another example. The BDA, the, the Dental Association, one of the things that we really need to do is use the people who are in this country better. There are 200 qualified Ukrainian dentists in this country who would love to work mm -hmm. in the NHS and they're being prevented oh, yes. because by the General Dental Council, one of those bureaucratic organisations. Let um, the Ukrainian dentists loose on our teeth. Absolutely. All right, Edwina Curry, thank is... you very much.